In this activity, you have the opportunity to explore data by changing its symbology through creating single symbol, graduated symbol, predominance, and chart maps. Let's open the following web map in ArcGIS Online. Again, no sign-in required. Open it in a separate web tab. The map opens with a set of litter data collected at intersections in a city center. As a single symbol map, only the distribution of points is shown. These small gold dots that you see. Let's change the base map to open street map so we can see the detail of the city center a bit better. Characteristics of litter were collected. Click on a point to access the categories that each piece of litter was organized or categorized into cans, fast food wrappers, glass bottles, plastic bottles, and other plastic waste. Note also the fields, latitude and longitude, that were needed to locate the points in the first place. Let's go ahead and open the table so you can see more detail. This is the I part of GIS, the information behind the map. Next, use layers to the left of the map to access the Community Litter Survey. The table, again, shows 15 records. Each record corresponds to a location in the city where litter was collected. Click on the Fast Food Wrappers field, sort descending, and select that row containing 29 fast food wrappers. Note its location highlighted on the map. You can do the same with the other fields, but examining the data table will only result in a limited understanding of the spatial patterns. Thus, you will map the data to augment your understanding. To the left of the map, open the Layers pane. Select the Community Litter Survey layer. Go to Properties. Go to the right panel. Styles. Choose Attributes. Use the Plus Field button. Choose Fast Food Wrappers and add that. Note that the layer is redrawn as a Counts and Amounts or Graduated Symbol map style. The more fast food wrappers that were found at each location, the larger the symbol drawn. What patterns do you notice about the pattern of the fast food wrappers and the amount? Is one part of the city more prone to these wrappers than another? Note the baseball stadium to the southeast of the study area. Does that have any impact? If so, why? Fast food wrappers were just one type of litter collected at each location. Next, you will map all of the kinds of litter to see what kinds of patterns there might be. Go to Styles, choose Attributes, click Plus Field and choose all of the attributes cans, glass bottles, other plastic waste, paper waste, and plastic bottles. Add all of those. Now, as you notice, the map redraws using the predominant category style. The color of each point corresponds to the type of litter that was most frequently found at each location, that is, what type is predominant. The darkness of each color, or saturation, indicates how predominant each style is. The size of each point is rather small here, isn't it? So feel free to change all of the symbols to a larger size or larger circle using style options clicking on the pencil to the right of the color ramp and adjust the size. That looks better. What type of litter is predominant closest to Petco Park Stadium on the southeast side of the study area? How predominant is that litter type compared to the site due north of it? Next, change the map to show each field collection site as a pie chart. Go to Styles, Charts and Size, Style Options, choose Pie Charts. Go to Symbol Style, Outline Color. Edit. Choose a shade of black or type 000000 in the hex number box. Close the select color window. For outline transparency, drag the slider down to about 40% and for outline width, drag the slider up to 2 pixel size. Close the symbol style window. You now see the type of litter at each location as well as the total amount collected at each location. What knowledge do you gain about the type and amount of litter with these pie charts? Next, change the pie charts to donut charts or rings. Using style options, scrolling down to the shape slider, dragging this shape slider about three quarters of the way to the donut shape. Done. 
Each symbol now shows the types of litter collected as a donut chart. Next, use Effects, Drop Shadow, and close the Effects pane. Now each donut or ring symbol has a dark highlight around it to make it stand out on the map. See an example here. The ring or donut charts provide a great deal of information about each litter point and also allows you to compare patterns, amounts, and the types of litter predominant between the points. Sometimes simplifying the information can aid in focusing on specific characteristics in the data. Experiment with the grouping tool in the charts style options. Using this tool, values below the grouping percentage are aggregated into the other category to simplify each chart. Setting it to 25%, for example, highlights the issue of the fast food wrappers in many of the sampled points shown here. You have made several types of maps in this activity. You have explored the intersections between mapping and mathematics. What type of map gives you the most insight? Single symbol, predominance, pie chart, donut chart, or something else? Graduated symbol, perhaps? Which type of litter is most problematic in different parts of downtown San Diego? What action might it, such insight inspire? A community litter awareness campaign, strategically placed recycle bins, or something else? How could such action be taken? Who would be the stakeholders? And how can these maps and analyses help them visualize where to focus their efforts? Remember that you've mapped litter data. This could be any kind of data, water quality, weather, tree species, and more. Being critical of the data is a theme running throughout this book. Ask questions with this and any other type of data collected in the field. What time of day, day of the week, and time of year was the data collected? Was it collected by one person or a team? How was it collected? What tools were used? How much time at each point was spent collecting data? Was the data collected in the street, the gutter, on the sidewalk, or somewhere else? What was the aerial extent of the litter zone at each location? Was it one meter, one foot, two meters, two feet, etc.? Was it a circle shape, a square? What was it? How would knowing these pieces of information affect your assessment? Thanks.